MSHA's hazard communication standard requires you to inventory your mine's chemicals and to decide what your hazard is. If a chemical is hazardous, it must be included in your HAZCOM program. That means you must make sure it's labeled. You also have to keep a copy of its material safety data sheet, which we call an MSDS, and you have to train your miners about the chemical's hazards as well as how they can protect themselves from those hazards. We made this video to help you learn how to inventory the chemicals in your mine and how to decide what your hazard is. Your miners don't need to be afraid of chemicals. Millions of people work safely with them every day. But their health is at stake, and you have to provide a safe and healthful workplace. We realize that in any industrial environment, exceptions can occur. Equipment can wear out, leaks can develop, machinery can run into containers. Where emergencies can happen, or when chemical overexposures can harm your employees, they need to have the knowledge to protect themselves. That's what MSHA's Hazard Communication Standard, or HAZCOM, is for. Now what do you have to do to comply with HAZCOM, and how does it work? If your operation is like most mines, compliance is not complicated. You have to inventory the chemicals at your mine and determine what your hazard is. Keep a list of the hazardous chemicals. Establish a written HAZCOM program. We have models that you can use for a pattern. Prepare a label and MSDS for your product. Make sure that containers of hazardous chemicals are labeled. Keep a file or book of MSDSs for the hazardous chemicals at your mine. Train your miners about the HAZCOM program and the hazardous chemicals they can be exposed to. Allow your miners to look at the HAZCOM information you have and give them a copy of it if they ask. Hazard determination is your chemical inventory. You must look at all the chemicals at your mine and decide which can be a physical or health hazard. Some chemicals are physical hazards, some are health hazards, some can be both, and some are neither. Some chemicals are exempt from HAZCOM because they're already regulated by other federal agencies. HAZCOM has an entire section of exemptions from the rule, and before you inventory your chemicals, you need to know what chemicals you can exclude. If you buy an ordinary consumer product, you do not have to include it in your mine's HAZCOM program if you use it as a manufacturer intended, and it does not expose the miner more often or for longer duration than ordinary consumer use. Here's an example of what we mean. You bought cleaner with ammonia for your truck drivers to clean their windshields. The drivers clean them two or three times each shift. Should you include the cleaner in your HAZCOM program? The answer is no. Your truck drivers are using it like an ordinary consumer would. Suppose you bought the same ammonia-based cleaner for your janitor to use. He'd use the cleaner on counters, mirrors, windows, bathroom tile, and other parts of your mill all day long. Should you include the cleaner in your HAZCOM program? Yes. The cleaner will be used as the manufacturer intended, but the janitor is exposed to ammonia for a longer time than an ordinary consumer would be. Manufactured goods, such as plastic pipes, conveyor belts, repair steel, and tires, are at every mine. For the purpose of HAZCOM, such goods are articles. Even if they contain a hazardous chemical, articles are exempt. There are two conditions, though. They must release no more than insignificant amounts of a hazardous chemical and pose no physical or health risk to exposed miners. This galvanized pipe is perfectly safe under ordinary mine conditions. And under ordinary conditions, it poses no hazard and, as an article, is exempt from HAZCOM. Does anyone ever weld on galvanized pipe? It happens in a lot of places. Among other problems, galvanized pipe is coated with numerous hazardous chemicals, including lead. When you're welding on it, significant amounts of lead fume are created, among other health hazards, and the pipe is no longer exempt. You don't need to include personal items, such as food, tobacco, drugs, or cosmetics, 
in either your hazard determination or your HAZCOM program. They are exempt if they are packaged and labeled for retail sale and intended for an individual miner's personal consumption or use. For example, suppose you bought several gallons of a gel hand cleaner at an auto parts store for use in your mine's maintenance shop. The label says it is an eye irritant and it does not contain harsh solvents. The store didn't have an MSDS to give you, but you get one through the product's web page. The MSDS says that the product contains the following hazardous ingredients, mineral oil, sodium hydroxide, and ethanolamine. The product is safe and presents no immediate or long-term health hazard. Ingestion may require medical attention and OSHA standards and SARA Title III do not apply to this cosmetic product. Do you need to include this soap in your HAZCOM program? The answer is no. The FDA has classified soaps as cosmetics and cosmetics are exempt under HAZCOM's definitions. Also, you can rely on the manufacturer's MSDS when it says that OSHA standards do not apply and you can infer that it also doesn't apply to HAZCOM. HAZCOM was designed to be fully compatible with the requirements of OSHA's hazard communication standards. If you're using a chemical product at your mine and it's not listed in HAZCOM's exemptions, how can you tell if it's hazardous? First, you should check the product's label and MSDS. They're your most reliable source of information about the hazards a chemical can pose. But beyond the label and MSDS, there are two questions that you ought to ask about a chemical. Can it cause harm? And can a miner be exposed to the harm under normal conditions of use or in a foreseeable emergency? If you answer yes to both of these questions, consider the chemical hazardous under HAZCOM. The basic rule of thumb, however, is to consider a chemical hazardous if its label or its MSDS says it's hazardous. What do we mean by foreseeable exposure? If a miner cannot be exposed to a chemical, or the risk of exposure is so slight that it's unforeseeable, the chemical should not be included in your HAZCOM program. Let's say that your truck drivers do not help with the repairs on your trucks. Only mechanics perform this work. Your drivers, therefore, are not exposed to a solvent that's used to remove gasket material in the shop. For your drivers, the exposure to the solvent is unforeseeable, but for your mechanics, the exposure is foreseeable. You have to include the solvent in your HAZCOM program, but you only need to train your mechanics, not your truck drivers, about the solvent's hazards. So, those are the basic ideas behind making a hazard determination. Let's look at some chemicals that are often found at mines and do a hazard determination on those. Diesel fuel is the most common of all mine chemicals. You have three pieces of diesel-powered equipment at your open pit mine, which you fuel with off-road diesel number two. The MSDS says this product is a combustible by Department of Transportation standards. The MSDS also says that long-term repeated exposure of laboratory animals to whole diesel exhaust has resulted in an increased incidence of lung cancer in them the National Fire Protection Association indicates no health hazard. Let's say one person is assigned to fuel your equipment. The operators of the machine do not help. Is this a hazardous chemical under these conditions? Yes. Diesel fuel is combustible and both the maintenance person and the machine operators have a potential for being burned and they must know of this hazard. There could be severe acute health effects from breathing the hot fumes if fuel were to spill on the engine. Exhaust fumes contain toxic gases and can be carcinogenic as well. What about motor oil? The label says there's no known hazard. The MSDS says that animal studies show used motor oil can cause cancer. Is motor oil a hazardous chemical? When new oil is put in an engine, it's not a hazardous chemical. But used motor oil is hazardous, and you must tell the employees who change the oil on your equipment about the potential cancer hazard. 
What about your mine's product? Is it a hazardous chemical? All mining commodities are chemicals. Many mine products, though not all, are hazardous because they contain silica, a hazardous chemical. Other components can also make a commodity harmful. If your mine's product is hazardous, you must include it in your HASCOM program and prepare an MSDSN label to give to your customers. You probably already know how your product should be classified. If not, you will have to review available scientific evidence to determine its hazards. HASCOM is an information and training standard. It requires you to know about the chemicals that you mine and to tell miners about the risks associated with exposure to them, the methods you use to control exposure, and the safety measures to take. The inventory of mine chemicals is an important first step toward cataloging mine hazards and informing your employees about them.